All right, thanks for tuning back in to Tying Tuesday, everyone. Hope you're doing well today. We're gonna tie an egg. At least, I think that's what this fly is. It's the crystal meth. A pretty cool little technique here. So we'll get one going. Starting out with the 2487, a good old standby from TMCO. Get that trapped in the vise here. And then we'll start with our thread. We have our Semperfly Classic Waxed in 6 ot Nice fluoro orange color. So I'm just gonna do a smooth underbody coating. This will be visible from underneath, but it's not gonna be seen, really. So we'll walk that back to our standard tie-in point, our most common tie-in point right by the barb. And then we need our material, some flat diamond braid. And we got our orange today for our eggs. So the first thing we're gonna do is take some of this orange flat diamond braid and we're just gonna cut ourselves a strand. You wanna make sure to leave yourself enough. I've started on this fly and then gotten towards the end and realized I was gonna be able to finish it because I didn't have enough material. So you don't wanna end there. But we'll go ahead and fold it right in half and create a bit of a bump in the middle. And that's gonna be what we're gonna tie in first. So we'll get that right off the back. I like to take it and figure out how much I want kind of coming off the top, not a whole lot overall. Um, really, you could kind of use that hook gape to sort of gauge and keep consistent, fly to fly. I'll pinch that into my left hand and then I will come in and secure it down with a couple of quick locking wraps. Don't want those to break free. And then I like to pull all the material up on that and we'll go a couple of wraps right in front of it. And now we're just gonna repeat this process forward. So we're gonna try and keep this diamond braid married and then we can create a new bump, fold it over, secure it down. I'll spin my thread counterclockwise to get a reverse jump on it. And I get a couple of wraps there, making sure it's not migrating. You can pull back on the material to get it to snug up against the bump behind it. And then a couple of wraps in front. And we're just gonna repeat this forward with similar size bumps. As you get to the midsection, you can kind of give it a little bit of a larger bump. Gets it to have more of a sort of rounded out profile overall. And then as you work forward, tapering that back down. So we'll push all this back, couple down. One more probably right in front here. Might be able to get two. Yeah, we'll stick with one. So we'll get that one down. Right behind the eye there. And then sneak in front of it and we can come in and trim it out. As close as we can without cutting anything that we don't want to there. And we don't want it to be able to pop back behind us. So it's nice to have a little bit of finishing room on this fly. Come down, wrap over top of everything and create a small thread head there. And then secure it with some whip finishes or whatever your preferred finishing knot is. But yeah, just a cool little, sort of a unique, it's a big uh, steelhead fly in the Pacific Northwest, I think in Michigan as well, wherever you might see some good steelhead populations. Uh, yeah, just a fun little fly to have around that nice fluorescent orange underneath and then the big old juicy egg-like material sitting up on top. So if you're out there fishing peg eggs, if you're out there fishing foam eggs, maybe give the crystal meth a shot. Could be a good one for you. But yeah, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this. 
Let us know if you're gonna tie up some of your own. Share what colors you like uh, in the comments below. And then, uh, yeah, give us a subscribe for more videos and find all your fly tying stuff at avidmax.com. Thanks for watching, have a great day.